Hello, my name is Logan, and today we're going to be going over a mod for Pokemon Infinite Fusion. I don't know about you, but this is the very first time I've heard of mods for this game. And let me tell you, this mod adds some quality of life to this game, and I highly recommend it. This video will be in sections. The very first part is going to show you guys how to install this mod. The other half of the video is going to go over the features, so please click on the section you want to watch. This part of the video is going to go over the installation of the mod. The very first thing you need to look at is what version of the game it is currently at. So right here it says the latest mod version is 0.7.1. Okay, so when we go down here where it says base mod download link, this is how you download the mod. You can see over here, it's a little smaller, but it says it's 0.7.0. So we're downloading an older version of the base version of the mod. It doesn't matter when you watch this video, you will always have to download the base mod first. And now that we know it's outdated, we have to look here, the mod download link, and this is how you update it. So you would want to click on this link and there's just a button that comes up and you hit download. And once that's done downloading, you will want to go here. And you can see here 0.7.1 is the latest version. And then here it even explains it as well. You need to download the base game data of the mod first before installing source code zip updates from its GitHub. So what that's saying is once you download the base game, you can then download source code zip. So that's where you'd want to click this and download it. This is how you update the mod. So depending on what version the game is, you may only have to download the base mod download link and not have to go to the GitHub to download a patch for the mod. All right, so I have both pieces downloaded. I have the mod and I have the patch. And then I went ahead and made a new folder because we're going to be extracting this into this folder here um, because this is the game itself. It's the game and the mod. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to open with and then I'm going to go to WinRAR. This is a separate piece of software. You use this to extract zip files. If you use whatever is baked into Windows, it will take forever to extract this game. I highly recommend downloading 7-Zip or WinRAR. They are both 100% free and I will have links in the description below. So I'm selecting WinRAR and then what we're going to do is hit Extract 2. And we're going to go into where I made this folder. And I'm going to select Infinite Fusion. All right, so once that is over, I'm just going to double check to make sure I did it correctly, which I did. So everything is there. I am now going to patch it. So kind of the same thing here. What we're going to do is right click, open with WinRAR. I'm going to double click inside of here and I'm going to hit extract two. We're going to go back into the same thing here, selecting the folder and hitting OK. So the key ingredient here is that it's asking me to replace files. If this does not pop up, it means you did it wrong. Luckily, it doesn't take long to delete whatever you did wrong and then try again. But we're going to hit yes to all. And then it should be done. So now when we go into Infinite Fusion here, I'm going to boot the game up. We've got the mod going and we have the most up to date version of the mod. This is how you install the game. Now, if something changes in the future, I will address it in a comment in the video itself, or I'll just make a new video. But for now, this is what you need to do. If you have any questions, please go to this mods discord so that you can get help 
directly from the person who made the mod, or you can leave a comment in this video, but please give as much information as possible so I can help you as easily and quickly as possible. Now we're going to go into the features. All right, so you are curious as to what this mod offers, and I'm going to try going over the main stuff, but on the website, there is a giant list of what this mod can do. There's major things, there's minor things, and even bug fixes. So first off, this mod was created to change the shiny system. The shinies in this game are a little bit different. So what we're gonna do, if I can get into the PC correctly, I'm gonna show you guys. So I changed all these Doduo into a shiny variant. Um, the shinies in this game just have their hue shifted a certain degree and that all the shinies will look the same. So this mod, changes that it will add different hues and I will show you that right now so bringing up the options menu we want to go to options and then I'm just going to click up so that we can get to the bottom of the list a lot quicker and here we can see the settings for the mod so automatically this is turned on by default I turned this off for the demonstration of the video so once we turn this on and we're going to back out. You can see now that the Doe Duo have had their colors shifted even more now. So when you have shiny Pokemon, they're, they're going to be getting a random color now. Now that was originally the main feature of this mod, but I'm going to go over a couple more things. So another thing is that you can access the PC anywhere. There are some conditions where you cannot, for instance, for instance, the Elite Four. They don't want you accessing your Pokemon during that event because it's sort of cheating, I guess, right? <laughs> so you can click PC and you have access to all your Pokemon uh, and you can switch them out, which is pretty cool. You just bring up the options menu and it's there. The other thing, there's a shop. Now, this shop has really unique items that you don't normally get. So there's a stone that'll swap your gender. There is a stone that forces evolution, which is very interesting. Uh, items that you normally cannot buy at a mart. Also, I'm guessing these are moves you normally cannot get anywhere in the game. And also there are even some items. All right, so we're gonna dive a little bit more into this option settings menu and kind of talk about it. So shiny animation, uh, originally in this game, if you had a shiny Pokemon and when they came out of the Pokeball, it doesn't show anything. In this mod, it will have that kind of sparkle effect. Shiny icons. Now this, as it says, reduces performance. So if your computer struggles already, this may put a burden onto your computer, but I will show that off. So we're gonna turn it on. Go back in here. So you can kind of see my computer even took just a second to load it up. So now you can see the hues without actually putting your cursor over it, which is really cool. Back in the options, we're going to look at some other stuff here. So big Pokemon icons. This one is really interesting. We're going to turn this on for all of them. So what it does is if you go into your Pokemon team, you can see that it is no longer the small little sprites that are animated, but actually they're battler sprites, which is pretty cool. It's kind of nice to look at that. Uh, kind of adds a little bit of flavor to the party screen. Um, and also it doesn't have those sprites that are cut in half. Sometimes there's, those are really hard to tell what Pokemon you have. All right, so you can even see that the PC is affected by this, but this puts huge loading times. So personally, I would just turn off the fusion sprite colors. Um, I would turn that off because the loading times are pretty crazy now. Like there's a quite a bit of delay. Cause that was, this is like maybe 10, that was 10 seconds to flip between both boxes. 
Um, and I'm guessing it's because of them being all shinies. So fusion preview. This is when you fuse two Pokemon and it just gives you a silhouette of the two choices. Uh, if you haven't seen those Pokemon before. So this eliminates that. It will just show you what the sprites look like. So the shiny fuse die, you're really going to need to go on to the mods website and read up on it. Basically, it's when you're fusing Pokemon together that are shiny that their shiny form will change um, if this is turned on. It will not remain the same color. So there's even an option to add a level cap to this game, making it sort of more difficult. Um, so if you want to challenge, you can turn this on and depending on what mode you're on dictates what the max level of your Pokemon are before each gym leader. So depending on how many badges you have is going to determine what the max level Pokemon in your team can be. There's this thing called shiny gamble odds. So what it is, is that the more you increase this number, that's the odds of a Pokemon becoming shiny. So this is one out of a hundred. So if you switch this to zero, and I'm gonna back out and show you guys this. When you go to your PC, this is how I turned all the Doe Duo into shiny. So we're gonna look at this one here. Uh, and you can see that there's Cure Actions and you can gamble for shiny. So this is gambling, the odds. I set it to zero, so it's guaranteed. So when I click on it, you can see that it says, wait, it became shiny. And for some reason, the color didn't change at all. So that's kind of unlucky. So let's see, this is actually a good learning opportunity. So let's see here. Okay, so you have to choose, and when you go to Cure Actions, you have to do gamble for new color. Okay, so there's a chance that the shiny just looks exactly the same. I wonder if they're going to change that in the future. It's kind of odd that they would let that happen. So that's a gambling feature. Uh, so you can actually spend some pokey to get a shiny Pokemon. So something not so obvious is the addition to being able to view the IVs and EVs of Pokemon. This isn't in the base game. So this mod adds that if you are someone who likes min maxing their Pokemon. There's another cool feature being able to sort your boxes. This is something that should be in the base game, but hey, I'm glad they added it here. Even more crazy stuff, the ability to learn moves from pre-evolutions. So like Persian being able to learn Payday. There's a feature that is not in the revamp settings. This used to say quick surf, but this mod changes it to quick field moves. And if you have that on, now when you approach something that normally would use like an HM, it doesn't ask if you want to use it. It just does it. Super cool. There are too many features to go over. Please go to the website and check it out for yourself. By the time you watch this video, I wouldn't be surprised there's even more features for this mod. I can't imagine playing this game without this mod now. I am very excited to see what this mod does to the game in the future. Now this part of the video, I'm going to go over a couple things that may not be relative in the future, but right now I would say they're pretty important to talk about. This mod is using the dynamic version of the game. That means it is not using the preloaded. You will need to have internet access to download all the custom sprites for this game. If your internet connection is slow, you're going to be experiencing some increased load times. If your computer has subpar hardware and you rely on the alternate launcher to play the game, currently there is not a version that contains the alternate launcher for this mod. The developer knows about that. So until the developer of Pokemon Infinite Fusion creates a preloaded version of 5.3, we will not see a preloaded version of this mod. Again, this can change in the near future, but currently there is no way to get the alternate launcher for this game. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below, but please, 
be as detailed as possible. The more information you give me, the easier it is for me to help you. If you say things like the game doesn't work, the mod doesn't work, it crashes, you know, that's not really helpful. I need details of what you were doing to cause the crash. If there are any error messages that pop up, things like that. The more information you give me, the more help I can give you. But I do recommend going to the Discord server for this mod if you have any problems. They do have a help section and you can ask your questions there. Now, if the problems are more related to the game itself, please go to the Pokemon Infinite Fusion Discord and ask your questions there. If you found this tutorial helpful in any way, please let me know, hit that like button, or even consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you on the next adventure. Bye-bye.